of Charlestown Council ready their meeting for December 15th to come, to come to order. May I have a roll call, please? Natalie here. Sullivan, present. Bannon here. Brad here. Buckle chair. We have a quorum. Uh, let's stand for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, it's not on the agenda, but today happens to be Chris Bannon's 80th birthday. Uh, I understand that financial contribution. <laughs> Uh, all right, first item of business is the uh, recognition of visitors presentation. Eastern Shore Out of the Darkness Walk uh, presented us with a certificate of participation. I'll read the letter uh, and then eventually I guess we'll have this certificate for people to be able to look at at some point. So, uh, Dear Town of Cape Charles, on behalf of the Eastern Shore Sur Community Services Board and the Eastern Shore Suicide Prevention Task Force, I would like to personally thank you for volunteering your time and efforts at the Eastern Shore Out of the Darkness Walk. This event could not have been a success without your help and the help of the many others who volunteered their time. Due to the many efforts of local sponsors, human services, service organizations, task force members, walkers and volunteers like yourselves, we were able to raise almost $10,000 for this event. And the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, in total we had 154 walkers participate in the event. Once again, thank you for your contribution. It is signed Kelly hill Dillon, uh, who's the Director of Program Development, Planning and Prevention uh, Services, and there's a very nice certificate that's awarded to the town for this. So, I think these things are important for us to become a part of, and uh, it's nice that we all participate. Uh, so, next order of business is public comment. Uh, at least for consideration purposes, 
Uh, with me tonight, uh, I have gifts at Christmas time. Uh, not birthday gifts, but I have a, uh, a copy of the DVD of the film and law plea groups. There's one for each member of council and the town manager and the mayor. And I have seven brochures, which means they're one short for somebody who need to read bands to him anyway, probably. Mm -hmm. so, uh, maybe they didn't get the paper. Seven brochures. Some of you may remember that there was a film made here in 1947 called The Clam Digger Dog, also known as the story of Mr. Hobbs. Uh, so 70 years later, there was a chance to make another film picture. Well, this one not kind of up with the one that's coming up next. Also, you may be aware, some of you are aware, that uh, HDTV has done a film here. Actually, I think they've done two. I'm not sure if the second has been released yet. Uh, our apartment, which they labeled the penthouse, was on that one. Uh, if you're not aware of that, a lot of people told me that that became a great emotional uh, thing for Cape Charles. So people that have B&Bs, people that have real estate, so, uh, and that's something that Cape Charles had no investment in. So, all I'm saying is that, you know, take the Clam Digger's Dollar. If you haven't seen that, I commend it to you. Uh, it's a really hokey, bad film, but it was 70 years ago, so it's black and white. It's fun to watch. This is a nice film. If you didn't see it, it's, it's a good film. It's a good family film. Uh, Regent would not do anything that would be different than I don't think. 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. Uh, so all I can say is I think the prospects are for film work here, if this become a back, becomes a backlog or whatever it may be, that uh, it's only better and better for things that might happen to Cape Charles. And whether it becomes an economic boon or not, I'm not about to say that, but I don't think it's going to be a backward step if you embrace it. And I hope you consider it for mine and enjoy the DVD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think yeah. they could do? Uh, Real three of Pam's daughter versus Lawrence. <laughs> uh, it's possible. I, I talked about that just today about the scene. If you haven't seen the scene where they lock up the evil banker, yeah. maybe a lawyer in banker too, which would be great. <laughs> in, in, in a shed, and it's got like two nails that wouldn't hold a chicken. I said, that'll hold him. It's really bad. But it's, uh, it could be a driving Mr. Daisy. <laughs> okay. Driving Mr. Daisy. Mr. Daisy. Okay. Do you have a question? Uh, well, I don't know, down, 10 years down the road, maybe we'll have the Kate Charles Film Festival. It's true as all films have been made here at Kate Charles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're Marathon, Kate Charles Film Festival. We've got the region's really close. So, I mean, the idea of them using this as a, a place to film, uh, we're going to have a, it's kind of what you call it, community, a little town, that kind of thing makes sense to them. So, it's, it's a convenience factor, too, to them. But they can pick other places as well. So I'm not Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Is there uh, any other public comment for me? That was it. That was it. All right, thank you. Time for public comment is closed. I need a motion to approve the agenda format. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Agenda format is approved. I need a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meetings that we have had. So, is there a second? Second. All in favor of approving the minutes as submitted? Aye. Uh, right. Any opposed? Yes, approved. Capital projects. 
$33,471 were disbursed for capital expenditures in November. Uh, of that amount, $31,764 was for the trail project. $1,707 was for the um, railroad park area. Uh, tax collection statistics you have before you as of November 30th. But as of this morning, staff has collected and posted $1,065,552 in real property taxes and $136,507 in personal property taxes and licenses in the new accounting system. Penalties are not applied until December 13th, and that's because the phones were down, and that might have hindered people having to call in and wanting to pay their taxes with the, um, over the phone, and also uh, the bills were out a week later. So we gave more disgrace. Meals tax revenue on the page five. Meals tax revenue was 7.7 percent higher year to date than last year. Transient occupancy tax revenue is 13.3 percent higher than year to date. <coughs> 2015 and local sales tax is 5% higher than this time last year. Any questions? Then I'll put the debt <coughs> on January. Okay. There was a time to get that done again. Do you have any answers for us? I never got that. Well, that's why I don't have a big one. Thank you. <coughs> no, we can, as far as when I left. We can review these. No, I said we can there's, there's, there's a, yeah. I think we can review these yeah. well, Can you post those online too? They weren't in the packet. No, they weren't in the packet. They didn't make the packet. Yeah. So, <coughs> all right. So, we'll, the council will get copies of all of that mm -hmm. uh, hopefully tomorrow. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Thank you. Is so, hey. Is the new system running? It is. Nerds are a little afraid, but it's just going well. Transition. It's always fun going down here. Any other questions? Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, to me, the only thing I have is that uh, everybody see the trends happening, gas tax, all that stuff. Uh, Sales tax is a little higher, but the harvest now, 40 grand. I mean, it, all I'm saying is what I'm going to put out there. There's a big, big shift. Fair enough. That's it. Fair enough. We do. We'll need to have I'm just say for the special that at some point. Next order of business plan commission boards. Uh, I don't have anything to add to this month's report. I uh, just want to remind everyone um, that the Planning Commission's agenda tentatively for the month before is posted and on the uh, Planning Commission's monthly report. So if you go to the Planning Commission agenda pass, you can find my monthly staff report always under 4C, uh, and that will give you an idea of what the Planning Commission has coming up next month. In January, uh, schedule to this point tentatively to look at the draft CIP and also to um, take a look at the draft design standards for the historic district, um, the historic town entrance overlay. Um, so those are two uh, projects that I know the council is interested in seeing this commission. So any questions? We'll see January. Any questions? Thank you very much. And I realize we did not <coughs> vote to approve the treasurer's report. Is there a second? Second. All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Treasurer's report is approved. Uh, code enforcement. Uh, the only thing I had to add uh, was a comment uh, from last month about the stip, uh, former Stip Park being used as a rubber shell. Um, I rode back there and it looks like most of what was back there was brush, big piles of brush. I'm not sure if that came from uh, when they acquired the Gallagher property and cleaned that up a little bit. Um, nothing a good control burn wouldn't take care of. Uh, there was one small, small pile of uh, looked like center blocks and stuff. I'm assuming that's probably just clean up from when they uh, did the foundation for the Harvey building. So I'm hoping they'll take care of that. But I um, didn't see a major issue, but uh, I still will um, bring it to their attention. 
least get cleaned up the best I can. Okay. All right. Any, any more questions? Right. Thank you very much. Town Harbor. And Charlie is unable to attend and I do this uh, family issues. So uh, I can tell you through the report if anyone has any questions that you received the last Friday. Concerns and their concerns that we noticed as well. Uh, Dale is going to try to go over there and delve farther into some of those numbers to see if there's a trend, a more specific trend. Uh, so we got probably a little premature for me to talk about that at this point, but it's something that we're looking into. I would, I guess we're, work, we're working on the second, third quarter, try to have the numbers on those. The only have reflected here in the first quarter. I, I said, you all something this afternoon. Yeah, I saw that. In that. I did see that. I'd, I'd like to suggest the following. We are going to form a, a town harbor uh, focus committee later. And, well, fairly soon, I hope. I hope at this meeting. Is, is, yeah, so, so, so we'll have a town council member on that. And one of the first things I would expect they would, be, they would do would be to go through the finances with with Debbie and with Charlie and figure out why things are going the way they are and what it is that changed. And then how do we fix that? So I think the other thing that that board will be doing would be <coughs> having, I, I would hope they would be looking at the possibilities of bringing in a, uh, a management company. Whether, you don't know that we're gonna do that, but it's something that simply said that we look at. So there's a whole bunch of, bundle of things here that I'd like to see that. There's, Folks come back from the splits. Everyone okay with that? All right. So, uh, thank you. Uh, let's see. The library. I don't have anything to add, but I'd like to respond to town council's request for the number of library card holders at uh, Eastern Shore Public Library that calls Air Library the home library. There are currently Total in the Eastern Shore Public Library system, there are 16,618 library card holders. There are 2,048 library card holders that give their home address as a Cape Charles Memorial Library. So that means that we are the home library for 12.3% of all Eastern Shore Public Library patrons. And I, I just want people to know that that's from Eastville down, that we have many users in Ajapango and, and even further up. So um, and sometimes people don't put the right library they move, so just keep that in mind. What was the total number of library cards? 16,618. That's in sure. both counties. That's all on the whole Eastern Shore. Oh, both counties. Both counties. Got the total in both okay, counties. That makes sense. It's right. a regional library system. And the total that we have that lists on their library card application that Cape Charles is there, and it could be Cape Charles, it could be. Nassauatics, it could be Akamak or Shinti. They list Cape Charles as our home library. <coughs> we have 2,048 library card users. Okay, yeah. So that's 12.3%. Except for it doesn't go down to the bridge. Yeah. So it's. It's not a lot. It's a Yes. So they normally have the. I think when I apply for a card, I give my address. It's mm -hmm. I, I had to give my mailing address. Mm -hmm which included a zip code. Mm -hmm. Can they not do a search by zip code zip for code. East Coast and Cape Charles? Well, you get, you get, it's the whole area. You, but you got, you got mail delivery that I'm in Sheridan. My yes. zip code is 23310. And that's true. And that's why I'm saying Eastville Town. You're in Eastville Town. Yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> Isn't that what that 2000 Yeah, I don't know how they... they they, you said they listed it as. I don't know how they came up with this figure. This is the Eastern Shore Public Library. We are not able to pull up the statistics. They had to get this for me. So, I mean, I, I can ask if. if After they can pull my zip code. You know, if they can do it more in depth. But it took them a while to get this. So, I don't know. You probably missed the four people in Cape Girl. Yeah, but the problem is Cape Girl still shows up as a Cape Girl mailing address. Everything down to the British Columbia <laughs> here is delivered by that. It isn't I mean, the more important Cape number. Charles. Some people, use Some people are there. If you get your mail delivered through Cape Charles, I know that. I, know. I understand that. That's, That's what I'm why saying. I'm saying if you could get a zip code, get it by zip code, then you would get the Eastville, you would get Jericho. No, 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 no. You 
Cape Charles, 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 Cape
at that point, the uh, Harbor Area Review Board recommended approval of the uh, Harbor Area Development Certificate. Uh, the summary report is required by ordinance and was delivered to the council at the uh, December 1 uh, work session. Um, it recommends that the council accept the Harbor Area Review Board's recommendation to approve the Harbor Development Certificate. I have a motion to accept the Harbor Review Area Review Board's recommendation and approve the Harbor Development Certificate for this location. So um, moved. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Uh, any, any opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, adoption of the Comprehensive Plan Update Certificate. The comprehensive plan has been through the required uh, review and public hearing <coughs> process. Um, public hearing from the complaint commission was held on the uh, 6th of December. Uh, immediately following the plan commission, adopted a resolution approving the amendments and certifying the plan. We sent the plan to town council with the recommendation uh, that the plan be approved and adopted. The amendments include um, variance from what was advertised for the public hearing document, section four, implementation, uh, section 4.1, town priorities, which was struck from the previous draft, and the priorities were developed out of the uh, strategic planning session on December 10th. That document's in front of you. That will be added to the uh, draft document that was advertised for public hearing. It's the only section that's changed since the public hearing. Uh, I would like a motion to uh, adopt a resolution approving the amendments and adopting the comprehensive plan document dated December 2015 as the comprehensive plan for the town of Cape Charles so move. with the, met the amendments as noted. <coughs> so moved. Is there any discussion on this? Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, any opposed? Yay. That was a yay, not a nay. That was a yay. <laughs> yay. Motion is approved. Unanimous. <coughs> okay, thank you. And actually, uh, I see I've not done this exactly right. There's an adoption of the comprehensive plan update. I'll read it. My apologies, people. You won't have to deal with me too much longer. We're asked to go to Virginia Title 15.2, Chapter 22, Section 15.2-223, requires the town of Cape Charles to prepare and recommend a comprehensive plan update of the physical development of its territory in Section 15.2 mandates that at least once every five years the comprehensive plan is reviewed by the local planning commission, and whereas the Cape Charles Planning Commission has reviewed the existing comprehensive plan and determined it to be advisable to update that plan, and whereas updates have been proposed for the incorporation of the 2016 comprehensive plan, and whereas the Cape Charles Planning Commission held a public hearing and recommended approval of the 2016 updated comprehensive plan, and whereas a public hearing on the 2016 Cape Charles Comprehensive Plan was held on 2, December 6, 2016 by the Town Council. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council of Cape Charles, Virginia, adopts the 2016 Comprehensive Plan and land use map for the Town of Cape Charles. And now I need to ask for a motion for the second. Natalia, yes. Solomon, yes. Bannon, yes. Brown, yes. Bannon, yes. Motion is carried. Thank you all. Thank you for your questions. How long, how long was the preparation? Two years? More than that. Three years. Almost almost as long as I when I first came on. Okay. Time to start again. Yep. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're going to find we're years. about to set a record on getting out of here on time. Next order of business is municipal building internet connectivity. I guess I'll take this one, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as I think you heard during Debbie's report, uh, we've had some issues with that. Uh, I believe Chief Pruitt pointed out as part of his weekly report last week. Uh, in trying to find a resolution to this, um, so we contracted uh, Chesapeake Bay Communications and they said that the fiber is across the street, across Mason Avenue, and they've given us a, uh, a cost of estimate of $10,000 to make that connection. Uh, we discussed this at the council's December 1st uh, session. 
front, side, back. Well, it's going kind to of do one of those doors in front by the uh, by what's currently the, the little bay where they've got the, uh, the boat. So the stairway will come down into the building, but exit out that door. Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion is carried. We zipped through things very quickly, didn't we? Next item of business is Mayor and Council comments. Every, ever since you got along, Dar will be a faster and faster. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm cool. I mean, 
We talked about this the last yeah. work session. So it's like, why are we having another work session? Why don't we just say? Are talking about this at a work session? Saturday. Saturday. That's it. Saturday. Why don't we just say, we say it like it is, and like then we need to be written tell them. Uh, oh, and that was all the partners, too. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, that's it. I need a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. second. All in favor? 